Excellencies, distinguished delegates and guests. I'm very happy to be here today. Thank you very much for the invitation to the organizers. And I will try to show you sharing my screen and also if I'm allowed to use my cable, what we have learned in our federation during the pandemic. And I hope this can help all of you to see also, as the moderator was saying, how we see things from a civil society perspective. So I'm going to use these words from the Secretary General in a report as far as 2010, because it has been repeated many times, and I think it shows how the role of families has always been very important in society, but is especially important during these unprecedented times of pandemic. You can see that as basic and essential building blocks of societies, families have a crucial role in social development. But also, they bear the primary responsibility for the education and socialization of children, for instilling values of citizenship and belonging in society, good citizens, responsible citizens, usually come from families who have taken this social responsibility as part of their task. And these are usually strong families. Also, families provide care, material and non-material care, from children to older persons, or those suffering from illness, as we have seen lately so much. So they really are the shelter, the place where we can go when things are difficult, are hard. It is, it is, it is necessary to find shelter somewhere. And in the case of this pandemic, we can see that it has really affected all members of society in different ways, but all of them, so that families are more than ever involved. We know very well it has affected elders, and I wanted to get this idea, which is our conclusion, uh, through the words of uh, an article in The Economist, this pandemic has shown the urgency of reforming care for the elderly. Most people should be helped at home as they age, or at least be really helped by their families as, as long as it is possible. So we need to rethink this, and this is a first conclusion. Also children, UNICEF has told us, and many, many other organizations working with children have confirmed that children are really at risk of becoming the hidden mid-term and even long-term victims because they're suffering, as we just had the chance to listen from Dr. Ragavan, the suffering, the lack of education, the lack of support, etc., etc. So this is another point we are trying to focus on in our dealing with families. But also mothers. If we think about it, mothers have been, as the New York Times was underlying, the real shock absorbers of the pandemic. All the difficulties usually go in families to those who are more ready for it. And usually they are mothers. They should be fathers also. We know that. And that's why we also want fathers to take the opportunity during this pandemic to see how important they can be also in uh, fulfilling this, this social role. You know that as IFFD, 
we are present in 70 countries of the five continents. We have more than 250 family centers and we reach more than 30,000 parents every year, which is also a lot of families and a lot of people. We also produce different research papers, some of them with UNICEF, which I want to thank very much today. The, now that uh, Dr. Raghavan is here. And also we organize around 12 race awareness event every year. So this is our experience, what I've just exposed very quickly. And it shows that families have had all these inputs during the pandemic. First of all, they have had to adjust to telework in many situations, or if not, at least to work in different conditions in a different situation. Second, they have got a much bigger responsibility on education. The responsibility in many cases of remote learning, which we know how difficult has been, especially in areas where there is no easy access to internet, etc. Third, they have had to cope with more time demanding tasks and course, more people at home, more people for lunch, more people for dinner. Many times also, this depends on the countries, but I think it's in many, many countries, we see now how the incomes have decreased for the families. So how they have had to arrange all this extra work with less money. And of course, in the midst of all this, all the health measures to be able to uh, slow contagion and to, and to prevent the illness as much as possible. If we think about it, this has a lot to do with quite a few sustainable development uh, goals. Goal number one, poverty. Goal number three, health. Goal number four, education. Goal number five, um, equality. Goal number eight, a decent job. And we also know that this has produced different effects. When the family was prepared, of course, they have been cemented by a crisis. But when they were not, they have been eroded by it. We have seen so many cases in our federation also of families having to deal with unemployment, uh, bankruptcy, inequalities, uh, women having to get all this extra work in adaptation, isolation, mental disorders, sometimes online addictions, online abuse and exploitation. Uh, okay, so all these things are, are, are there and we need to study them more carefully and to see how we can help families to deal with all these problems now, but also after the pandemic. So that's why to end I will give some very quick recommendations. First, on work-family balance, we feel tar target 5.4 of the Sustainable Development Agenda, this uh, valuing unpaid care and work and promoting more flexibility to telework, especially for women, promotes fathers' involvement in education and make sure that school parents relations grow and get stronger. Then, you know, our uh, topic is parenting education. We want to focus on create routines that help to manage the stress and to fulfill the tasks really better every day. Also bridge the digital divide between generations, between social situations, 
and foster remote learning when it's needed. So take advantage of the experience we have had during these months. And last, prevent violence and conflict, providing the tools to promote the stability and reaction to crisis. You know that in our courses, we try not to tell parents what they should do, but to give them the tools to be able to decide in the best possible way what they want to do and what they can do to help their children. Thank you very much.